All right, let's roll. Here's the next kind of problems with heat, and that is heat transfer. This is exercise 14D, pages 245 and 247. Think about a thermos where all the heat or all the cold is trapped inside the thermos. So the whole point to this is to understand that if you have some cold water and then you pour in hot water and quickly trap it all, you're going to assume that all the hot water and its heat gets transferred into the cold so that the heat lost is e by the hot is equal to the heat gained by the cold. So the heat lost by the hot is going to be equal to the heat gained by the cold. And remember, if you have something hot and something cold, the temperature at the end meets in the middle. And so we're making sure whenever we do this setup right here, because we're basically saying the heat that's lost is equal to the heat that's gained. Heat is equal to mc delta t. Heat is equal to mc delta t. But in order to get the setup right, we either make sure that the temperature final meets closest to the equal sign in the middle, or you can make sure that the temperature change must always be positive. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of problems to see how it works. There they are, two different types. One is going to ask you to find the final temperature, and the other one is going to ask you to find one of the unknowns over here. Okay, so hit your pause. Make sure you know what you're doing. Give it your best shot, and then we'll come back and see if you did it the right way. Pause and battle. Work it through. Don't just give up quickly. Try your best to get through the whole problem. Look at your notes. Look at your book. Try it again, even if it didn't work out the first time. Go through, see what you can do, and then we'll come back. All right? Okay, you're back. Let's take a look. How do you know it's a heat loss equal heat gain problem? Well, look, you've got some cold stuff mixed with something warm. So, heat lost, heat gained. No reaction. Water warm, water cold mixed together just makes water slightly warmer or slightly colder. So heat lost equal heat gain, which means MC T initial minus T final for the part that's losing the heat. And obviously, which one is losing the heat? The warmer. So we'll call it hot is equal to MC T final minus T initial for the cold. And remember, the final temperature meets in the middle. So let's put in what we know. Since this is the hot, it's going to be losing. So 121 grams. This is water liquid. So because this is liquid water, you can use whatever heat capacity that you want for H2O liquid. You can either use 4.186, or actually that should be 4.184 joules per gram per degree C, but check it out. The reason why the unit calories was invented here is because we use H2O liquid so much and everybody likes multiplying by one. So I'm going to use calories. 1.000 calories per gram per degree C. The initial temperature is 69. And the final temperature, well that's what we want to know, right? What is the final temperature? The mass of the cold is 37 grams. It's water liquid again, so you use the same heat capacity for water liquid. And here, T final minus 4. All right? Can you do that algebra? Sure you can. Let's do some simple calculations here to warm up to it. Okay, get closer. 121 times 1 is 121. And then this is 69 minus TF. This is 37 times 1, or 37. So it's 37 times TF minus 4. So let's distribute this out. 121 times 69. is 
8349. And 121 times negative TF is negative 121 TF. 37 times TF is 37 TF. And 37 times negative 4 is negative 148. All right, so from here, you want to gather like terms, which means you move all the TFs on one side, move all the numbers on the other, and it doesn't matter which side. I like to keep mine positive and positive, but you could get negative and negative, you'd still get the right answer. So I'm going to add 121 TF to both sides, because that equals zero, and I'm going to add 148 to both sides, because that equals zero. So what are we left with? We're left with 158 TF is equal to, I'll go ahead and punch it in my calculator, 8349 plus 148, 8497. Okay, so don't we just divide both sides by 158, divide by 158 to get TF. TF is equal to whatever 8497 divided by 158 is. Well, I get 54 degrees C. Now, why do we use 54? Because this is to the ones place, and this is to the ones place, so the final answer is going to be to the ones place. Okay? And before we leave this problem, we should do a sanity check, see if it makes sense. We have a little bit of cold water added to a lot of hot water. So first off, the temperature has to be in between the two, right? It's not like you're going to add cold water to hot water and make it hotter. Or give hot water to cold water and make it even colder. No, it's got to be in between. And because there's more of the warmer than there is of the colder, the final temperature has to be closer to the warmer. There you go. That makes sense. All right, so that's that problem. Let's do the next. 75.3 grams of an unknown solid at this temperature are mixed with 84 grams of water liquid at 20. Final temperature is given. What's the unknown solid? Well, we have something hot and something cold added together. So it's MC, T initial minus T final, again, of the hot because that's the lost, and MC T final minus T initial of the cold. Okay, so what do we know? Well, we know that the unknown solid is hot, so 75.3 grams. Don't know what the heat capacity is, but we know the initial temperature was 171, and we know the final temperature is 31. We know the water, the mass, and let's do this so that we can do the heat capacity in calories. We could do it in joules, but I like multiplying by one. The final temperature was 31, and the initial temperature was 20. Notice that that is a positive delta T for the heat that was lost, and this is a positive delta T for the heat that was gained. That's why delta T, the change in temperature, must always be positive. Notice that the only thing we don't know is the heat capacity for the unknown solid, and that's what we're going to calculate. All right, so let's work through. Let's just go C times 75.3. And remember, whenever we do this addition subtraction, you'd better draw your lines. Or 
171 minus 31 is 0, 1, 4. Okay. So that's 140 degrees C. This is 84 times 11. So that's going to be two sig figs here, right? Okay, so C is equal to 84 times 11 divided by 75.3 divided by 140 into two sig figs. That's 84 times 11 divided by 75.3 divided by 140, I get the two sig fig 0 0.088. And what are our units here? Well, everything else cancels here on this side, but calories, right? And then over here, the grams comes over the degree C comes over. So grams, I'm sorry, calories per gram per degree C, which is what it has to be whenever we're doing a heat capacity. So that's what C is equal to. Okay, that's it. You just have to follow along, solve for what you need. Good luck. Do the algebra. Be careful with the sig figs with addition subtraction. Have at it. 14D.